Hey, this is Heather from the Renaissance English History Podcast, and this is your Tudor Minute for May the 19th. It's a sad day in Tudor England. Early this morning in 1536, Anne Boleyn celebrated Mass for the last time. She received the sacrament from her almoner, John Skip. At 8 a.m., Sir William Kingston, the constable of the tower, arrived and told Anne that she needed to prepare herself for her coming death. She left her chambers and took her final walk out of the Queen's lodging past the Great Hall to the black draped scaffold. She was wearing a robe of gray or black damask with ermine, a red kirtle underneath, and a gable hood in the English style rather than the French style she had always favored. At the scaffold, Kingston helped her up the steps. The crowd was filled with people she knew, including both friends and enemies, and it was quiet as she gave her final speech. One spectator described her as never so beautiful. She said, Good Christian people, I have come here not to preach a sermon. I have come here to die. For according to the law and by the law, I am judged to die. And therefore, I will speak nothing against it. I am come hither to accuse no man, nor speak of that whereof I am accused and condemned to die. But I pray God save the king and send him long to reign over you. For a gentler nor a more merciful prince was there never, and to me he was ever a good and gentle and sovereign lord. And if any person will meddle of my cause, I require them to judge the best. And thus I take my leave of the world and of you all, and I heartily desire you all to pray for me. Anne's ladies removed her mantle, she lifted her hood, and she put her hair up into a cap to keep it out of the way of the sword. Eric Ives, her biographer, writes of how the only time she showed any kind of fear was how she kept looking behind her to check that the executioner wasn't going to strike the blow too soon. Anne paid the executioner. He asked Anne's forgiveness, and she knelt upright in the straw, praying all the while, O Lord, have mercy on me. To God I commend my soul. As Anne prayed, the executioner called out to his assistant to pass him the sword, and as she moved her head to follow what the assistant was doing, The executioner came up unnoticed behind her and beheaded her. It took just one stroke. Anne's ladies then wrapped up her head and body in a white cloth and took them to the chapel of St. Peter ad Vincula, where she was placed in an old elm chest which had once contained bow staves, and she was buried in an unmarked grave. That's your Tudor Minute for today. Remember, you can dive deeper into life in 16th century England through the Renaissance English History Podcast at englandcast.com.